How we doing? Fox back again for sound design tutorials. This is day two with my new synth, Synth Master from KV331 Audio. Uh, today I wanted to show off the additive oscillator. You can't really call it an oscillator because it's, although it fits in one section of one part, whereas if you're using the subtractive you can just get like one waveform. If you drop it onto one part, you get two, four, six, eight different waves that you can stack up on top of each other in typical additive style. As I say, this one will probably get overlooked the most, I think, for people that got this, because there's that much you can do with the vector ones and the wave scanning. Even the basic ones are probably going to be more popular. But I wanted to show you what you can make with an additive one. Uh, I've made a, a basic saw-ish sort of lead. Uh, this is the sound we've got. sound to say I don't use all of the oscillators that we've got available I've used six two of them are saw waves I think one's a square a couple of Rhodes ones which are like old keyboards no modulation really no I've got nothing in the matrix section look didn't really need it I've got a bit of light distortion with a filter and a couple of other effects to help thicken it up so yeah so it is quite a basic the most basic what we've got here compared to in regards to like say the wave scan and the vector but I wanted to show you can still make some really brilliant sounds of it this is a this synth does not cease to amaze me every time I use it I find something else that impresses me every time I use it something simple like being able to invert the waveforms I mean you get it with FM8 and stuff but it, it makes a hell of a difference but yeah for now we're going to go and create a new instance of this preset so I'm only going to be using layer one and I'm only going to be using one oscillator oscillator one which we're going to set to an additive one um, for this first box I changed it to a square the next two were both sawtooths the fourth one I had was uh, Rhodes Polar Polaris one it's in, the, it's in this one single socket waveforms Rhodes Polaris one then I had some noise just to thicken the sound up and then I had another Rhodes one which was Polaris 6 Rhodes Polaris 6 we're going to mess around with the uh, transposition now we're going to do it all on semitones it's easier for me to work out what's going on first one we're going to set to one semitone the second one to one semitone, so square and one saw wave. The second saw wave we're going to set to 13 semitones, which is an octave up. The first Polaris one we're going to set to one semitone as well. Doesn't matter about the noise because it fills all frequencies anyway, but we'll set it to one. And the second Polaris one we're going to set to 12 semitones, uh, 13 semitones as well, sorry. So one octave up. <laughs> going to invert this first square wave, bring in the next one, the first saw wave, second saw wave, not quite full volume, to the right slightly. The noise, only tiny bit of noise. About eight o'clock on the dial. Don't need to detune the noise obviously. The last Polaris one. Around to about two o'clock. Detune this the opposite to the first Polaris. Just a tiny bit. Click the free click the free button. Just turn the filter on there, filter one, as we are going to be using that later on. Um, I didn't do anything really in here. Uh, kept it on series mode for the filter. Obviously, click it on to turn it on. I'll give us four voices a unison. Just 
spread their new voices. Panama as well to I'll give a bit of uh, distortion with the filters hell which helped made it a bit louder. I'll straighten this curve up as best I could. Just a tiny little kink at the bottom I add. I didn't want it too harsh. Same, just a little tail squaring off at the top. You're gonna, as you inc as you uh, keep putting these distortions on, you're gonna need to pull most of the volume down just to stop it. So when you notice with you, any type of distortion that you add on it, whether it's with this, with the ensemble, or whatever effect you're using, it greatly boosts the volume. So yeah, just keep an eye on it and keep pulling the master volume down, so to make sure you're not clipping. So yeah, the drive I pushed around for this uh, distortion on the filter, I pushed around to about nine o'clock. Give the slope a little bit more steepness and put the cut off to about one o'clock for the filter. I'll just back the attack off on the master envelope just so that the notes weren't coming in quite so harshly. effects section I use this ensemble it's like a chorus it is a really really good bit of kit you got an EQ make sure the EQ is turned on I also done some distortion for this as well the distortion for this I pulled the width back to about one o'clock phase to about two o'clock uh, for the mods, I didn't use LFO 1, I turned all three of them down to dead zero. LFO 2 I pulled back to about 1 o'clock. Phase and the width I kept where it was. About 13 for the mix. No delay, no space. The EQing. I just uh, boosted the highs. So it was the high parts that we were affecting rather than the lows. Again, just tame the uh, distortion curve a bit. So yeah, for that's it for the ensemble. You can obviously increase your mix to test. I kept the voices on three. The only other effects were in the master effects bus. I used the reverb. For some reason, um, the layer sends are a little bit messed up on this. I need to get in touch with somebody and try and work out what it is. The layer 1 send, bus 1, which is this. I've turned it on, you should be hearing it because it's on full. For some reason, I have to dial in bus 2. So the mix for bus 2 I had on about 2 o'clock and the dry I had around to about the same. that master volume
I didn't do anything in regards to the reverb controls. I found that they were okay where they were. Um, the late EQ I had turned on, all I did was just boost the, boost the highs again, a really small amount. Echo was the only other effect I used. I pulled the mix back to about 2 o'clock, kept the width on full, pan dead centre, tiny bit of feedback. I drove to about 9 o'clock, kept it on ping pong, I changed the right to a 1 over 8. I always use this when I do a ping pong, it, it keeps them different from each other. Same as the rest EQing, focus on the highs, no distortion. <laughs> Sound done. Nice and simple lead there. Um, I say it's two sim two saw waves, one square wave, two rows, and a bit of noise. So lovely bit of kit this is. I mean, it looks real basic, but you've got everything you need in one tiny little box. You could make thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of sounds just with this one. And then, as well as this, I could now, in the second oscillator box, have another saw tooth on, which I will. I'll turn it on. I will set it to free. I'll give this four voices. Thicken the sound up even more. You could probably even have this one lower to create a like a sub element of it, of it. Pull it down one octave. we pretty much done all that with just one oscillator slot and you've got four of them you could have one two three four five six seven eight, eight, eight times four you could have 32 separate waveforms in additive mode eight in each one of these two slots here and then for two layers so you can imagine the size of the sound you could build just using these simple simple oscillators yeah i can't stress enough how much i'm enjoying this synth it is brilliant i'm going to keep doing these tutorials many more to come. I'm going to try and show off all the oscillators. Next time I'll try and show uh, one of these vector oscillators. But yeah, for now, uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's www.youtube.com forward slash sound design tutorials. And uh, tweet me at sound design tuts. Okay, cheers. Thanks a lot. Bye.